Okay, we shall uh, start with the uh, QAM and OFDM basics. Um, and I will start with the, the basics of uh, QAM. So QAM is the quadrature amplitude uh, modulation. Uh, in this modulation, uh, we, we create signals that are two-dimensional. Uh, when we speak about two dimensions, they have an I uh, dimension and a Q dimension. And the signal um, can be either signal carrier or uh, uh, multiple carriers. Uh, but here we just show uh, one carrier F0 and the signal in time domain is actually composed by the I component amplitude. Uh, multiplied by cosine in this uh, frequency and the Q uh, multiplied by, by sine. Um, the I and Q values create a constellation map that uh, depends on the uh, level of depth we want to give the QAM modulation. Um, in this example we see uh, uh, 16 points that actually represent QAM 16 um, where each point in the constellation map uh, represent a different uh, symbol uh, and in the case of the 16 QAM uh, each point can, uh, can represent uh, 4 beats uh, um, uh, of, of data uh, where 2 beats are coming from the, the I value and 2 beats are coming from the Q value of each uh, point uh, in a similar manner, we can uh, um, modulate a signal uh, to QAM64, then we'll have 64 points, the uh, matrix will be an 8x8 eight eight grid matrix, and uh, the data um, uh, per symbol in QAM64 uh, will be uh, 6 bits per symbol, uh, 3 for the I, um, value and 3 for the Q value uh, and in the same way we can scale to QAM uh, 256 uh, which would be 16 by 16 and 8 bits of data per, uh, per symbol. So again uh, QAM is uh, either single carrier or uh, um, multi-carrier uh, modulation but in each carrier we have two dimensions that uh, actually create a symbol that represent the data we want to transfer. So uh, the information that is, uh, that is uh, included in the two-dimensional symbol is actually um, um, shown in both the amplitude and the phase uh, at the carrier frequency as each point in the constellation map will have uh, either a different phase or amplitude or both um, and actually in QAM16 uh, we have uh, a sum of four amplitudes A, uh, 3A and the negative minus A and minus 3A and these uh, four amplitudes uh, are um, uh, applicable for uh, the i-axis and also the q-axis. Um, and as we mentioned before, we can generate one single carrier this way or multiple carriers uh, that, that will be quamodulated um, as well. Okay, let's discuss very uh, schematically how a, a simple uh, QAM modulator uh, should look like. Um, so we we expect to see, as as we see we saw before, two uh, amplitudes that are coming uh, from from the uh, baseband uh, input. So we see baseband I and baseband Q we want to multiply these two amplitudes with a uh, frequency uh, component of the same frequency but we want to multiply the i with the cosine and the q with the sine and so we uh, we need to create the 0 90 degree to represent the sine and the cosine uh, on the LO um, uh, data and then we have 
two outputs for the two mixers RF1 and RF2 uh, that we can combine to see the, uh, the, uh, the total RF signal. So, so if we do the trigonometric uh, calculations it is uh, very simple to show that we take a, a um, single sideband baseband uh, signal uh, and uh, by, by using the QAM modulator uh, we actually create a double sideband um, RF signal uh, that have the information of both I and Q uh, and this information can be uh, later on um, recovered when we do the demodulation we will get back the I and Q values that we uh, that we uh, have uh, put in the modulator from from the very beginning, and by by getting the I and Q basement values, we should be able to recover the uh, the data that was uh, that was transmitted. Now let's talk a, li a little bit about uh, OFDM. So OFDM is orthogonal frequency domain uh, mul multiplexing. Uh, it's a, it's a, a complex uh, modulation that actually employ QAM but also uh, frequency division multiplexing. So it, it will take uh, several QAM um, uh, signals or symbols and, uh, and uh, multiplex them in a way that is called orthogonal and we will explain soon why uh, it is efficient and uh, why it's called orthogonal. Um, we uh, will have, uh, with OFDM, we'll have uh, QAM subcarriers that are spaced closely enough uh, so we can use the bandwidth to increase data rate uh, uh, with long uh, symbol durations. And orthogonal subcarriers is uh, um, a point that we will show soon uh, uh, graphically. Uh, they offer a minimum cross-carrier interference. So we can take these uh, closely spaced QAM subcarriers in a way and transmit them uh, simultaneously in a way that does not uh, um, uh, introduce any interference between these uh, different subcarriers. So, in order to explain it, we need to, to do a, a little reminder about uh, pulse signals and uh, how they, uh, uh, how they uh, translate from uh, time domain to frequency domain. And so, um, when we talk about uh, pulse in time domain, we, uh, we can look at the time window, pi t, that is multiplied with the, with the sign, uh, with some, some sign at the uh, carrier frequency or um, intermediate frequency. But anyways, uh, this uh, timed sign uh, translate in the frequency domain to a frequency of uh, sinus uh, uh, T, uh, sinus t over uh, sinus f over f um, that is centered uh, around the uh, sign frequency in time domain so basically graphically we can see it we have here a sign that is uh, enclosed within uh, time window and the Fourier uh, transformation of the sign will be this uh, sine t over t uh, sine f over f um, function centered in FSC and the nulls of this uh, function uh, will be located uh, in uh, um, uh, distances of 1 over t or n over t from the, uh, from the center frequency. So if we, uh, if we take the uh, properties of this uh, uh, function in, in frequency domain and we take several uh, functions, similar functions, uh, then uh, we can space them. 
smartly in a way that the peak of one uh, function will be at the null of the other function and this is uh, what we can see here in, in, in this slide so we take for example uh, four subcarriers uh, that are um, uh, spaced in uh, distances of delta f which is one over the, the period uh, of the, the time window um, in frequency domain and then we can see that the peaks of uh, one frequency or one subcarrier symbol uh, coincide with the null of all the others so this way um, the information of every subcarrier is not interfered by the other subcarriers so in frequency domain we can see that you know these uh, subcarriers each one of them will be a different sine wave uh, it doesn't have to be uh, it can be in either uh, phase uh, they can be different amplitudes as we discussed before uh, however even though they they look like they mix in time domain uh, which they do in frequency domain, uh, we can we we can see that they are separated very very uh, nicely, and and they don't uh, impair uh, each other. So they can coincide. We can increase the the throughput of the transmission uh, by uh, by this orthogonality um, uh, um, orthogonality uh, behavior. Uh, we can increase the data rate we transmit as we said if we have each symbol can carry four beats in QAM16 if we if we have multiple carriers we we just double the number of beats we can transmit in each time window so that that is a very uh, nice and desirable um, uh, attribute of the uh, OFDM And again, we can see that uh, we can have transmission of multiple subcarriers that are orthogonal, so they're not impaired by each other. Uh, each one of them will have a uh, number of bits uh, depending on the QAM depth, the QAM level, uh, and they will be uh, um, transmitted in different symbols. Uh, over time but also in frequency they are separated uh, very very nicely and that's the way many communication systems uh, actually employ OFDM so let's just uh, um, have uh, some sum summary of the OFDM attributes so the bandwidth that will be needed <clears throat> for an OFDM signal uh, the bandwidth of the transceiver uh, is usually uh, very easy to uh, to calculate and it is uh, um, calculated by the sub number of sub subcarrier used multiply by the subcarrier spacing so for example if we have a spacing of uh, of uh, 1 megahertz and we need uh, to transmit uh, 100 uh, carriers uh, in each um, uh, in each uh, uh, time uh, window then the uh, the bandwidth that will be needed will be one times 100 will be 100 megahertz for example so um, very uh, very clear how to to obtain the bandwidth needed for transmission of course this explains to us why there is a race to increase bandwidth in uh, many communication technologies uh, because bandwidth equals to more subcarriers and um, and uh, then if we have more subcarriers we can uh, transmit more uh, data more bits each each time window of course the other uh, way to to increase uh, data rate is to reduce the subcarrier spacing 
However, there are limitations to do, to do uh, narrow uh, subspacing, such as phase noise, such, such as other limitations. But this uh, very top bullet really explains the, the race that is, is being, uh, um, uh, uh, that is happening in the last uh, years to, to increase uh, data rates. Um, so it also, it also uh, OFDM also have uh, narrow uh, in-band uh, interference uh, um, rejection or some 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 way of uh, being able to to sustain such such interference. Long symbol durations uh, are possible because now in in each uh, symbol uh, we still have a lot of data. Uh, if we have a single uh, tone qualm, then in order to get high data rate, we, we have to, to, to have uh, short symbol durations, which creates uh, other um, trade-offs. Uh, and even though we have uh, low, low symbol duration, uh, the inter-symbol inter interference uh, can be uh, relatively, uh, can be relatively uh, low if we have, uh, if we include short guard intervals uh, that can contain multipath and other um, other uh, uh, impairments that can uh, degrade the the edges in time domain of, of um, the sim uh, the symbol uh, time window. Uh, as we mentioned, we have multiple carriers in uh, in OFDM. Uh, because uh, you know we uh, we try to to space as many subcarriers as we can in in the bandwidth that we have, and that creates what is known a high peak to average ratio. Uh, so in time domain, there are instance where the sum of all these sub symbols will uh, will build to a peak. And other moments, other instances, uh, there will be uh, some that is very, very low. And so the total signal will have high peak to average ratio, which is a known uh, um, uh, issue in uh, communication that actually creates uh, many challenges to the, uh, the hardware designers. And also, Put a lot of limitations on the efficiency of the uh, um, the transceivers, especially when we talk about the power amplifier that needs to um, to amplify the peaks, but also to be very efficient when the signal is very slow, is very small. So um, it is uh, it is uh, it is a known uh, problem, and uh, that's also one of the OFDM attributes. That's one, uh, one of the prices we pay for trying to, um, to increase uh, data rate and have uh, multiple uh, signals transmitted uh, simultaneously. And the last point is that because we have this uh, subcarriers uh, so nicely and closely spaced, there needs to be a good Synchronization in frequency between transmitters and receivers. If they're not, if they're not synchronized well, um, the information uh, and the data may be impaired. So yes, OFDM is also sensitive to uh, to frequency synchronization.